Okay, thank you. Harry. Please. Um, the international monetary system uh, has been one of my most favorite topics of discussion since the 1980s when I was an economist at the BIS. Actually, I published a paper, BIS economic paper, entitled Reserve Currency Diversification in 1986. And uh, things have hardly changed over the decades. Uh, so <clears throat> let me explain. And uh, some of the statistics have already been mentioned by uh, John uh, and, and, and partly Jeff. I hope you can read uh, a table, maybe too small for you. Uh, uh, that table is taken out from the, um, uh, the central bank survey conducted by 53 central banks and aggregated by the BIS every three years. And uh, as John said uh, a few minutes ago, daily turnover of global forex market amounted to $6.6 .6 trillion. Uh, and the BIS shows uh, its currency distribution by percentages, whose total being 200% rather than 100% because uh, you know exchange takes a pair. <laughs> Uh, on that basis, uh, because the table is so small, let me, uh, let me uh, pick up some statistics. As John said, the dollar captures 88% in the 2019 survey, this year's survey. Uh, dollar's proportion remained virtually unchanged uh, at 90 or a little less since the BIS began its survey in 1989. Uh, the first column says, uh, what, uh, 88 or 89 or something. The second and third uh, currencies actively traded on the forex market are the euro and the Japanese yen. Uh, to uh, the left uh, end, in 1989, uh, there was no euro, of course. I combined the Deutsche Mark, French franc, and other EMS currencies to come up with a number of uh, hypothetical uh, euro in 1989, uh, 80, uh, so, sorry, 33%, okay. While uh, the euro actually actually captured 32% in 2019, okay. A uh, big change by one percentage point. <laughs> the yen had a share of 27% in 1989, uh, the peak of the bubble economy of Japan, which dropped to 17% by 2007, uh, that is not shown in that table, uh, but uh, Japanese yen's number uh, has since fluctuate, fluctuated around 20, okay. Uh, in short, uh, the currency market hardly changed, as I said, as far as the distribution, distribution of major currencies are concerned. Now, let's look at the uh, emerging uh, markets economies' currencies. In 2001, the renminbi ranked 35 on the currency league table with a negligible percentage share, but moved up to eight with 4.3 percent share in 2019. Big increase. Other emerging economies also increased percentage shares uh, as illustrated on the graph on the right uh, bottom panel. Uh, big increase, but the number Numbers are small, anyway. So despite these salient increases, however, the presence of emerging market uh, uh, currencies is still pretty small in contrast to the size of their GDP and international trade of goods and services. Now, uh, let's discuss uh, the qualifications of the international uh, currency. Uh, Jeff Frankel, Peter Cannon, and all those uh, academic experts pointed out several conditions. Number one, economic size. Number two, develop, developed financial markets. Number three, confidence in the value of the currency. Number four, inertia. That's the favorite, you know. First of all, the economic size, but economic size does not immediately entail a wide international of the use of the currency. The US dollar, for example, it was in the late 19th century uh, that the US economy overtook the UK economy, uh, and so did German economy, actually. But both the US dollar and Reichsmark failed to impress the market. And uh, at that time, 
pound sterling continued to be the international currency. Okay. Uh, Jeff pointed out the US politics mattered in that regard because of US isolation policy. Uh, it may be true, uh, here's a point. But I think demand side elements also matter. You know, uh, in my opinion, market confidence matters a lot for an actively used international currency. It's not only uh, a confidence in the value of the currency, but confidence in its integrity that matters. You know, the integrity of a currency is maintained uh, only when it functions properly as a means of exchange, unit of account, and store of value. Uh, to be a little more specific, um, the monetary authorities have to create and maintain a system so as to ensure reliable uh, means of payment, wide, deep financial markets, supported <laughs> by many down-to-earth uh, elements. For example, banknote counterfeit deterrence capabilities, legal stability and the transparency of rules and regulations, as well as law enforcement capability over financial fraud and wrongdoings, and last but not least, the political and economic independence of the central bank from both domestic and international pressures. So, now let me turn to potential competitors of the US dollar. First, the renminbi. It's so obvious to me that uh, there is a long, long way for the Chinese currency to go before it gains confidence in the market on all the accounts I discussed. Uh, in my opinion, it is highly unlikely that the renminbi becomes the you know, uh, vehicle currency in the market this century, maybe next century. Okay, what about the euro? Uh, of course, the euro has a natural, ap natural appeal, and in fact, it's the second international currency. But in order for the euro to play a bigger role, its financial markets need to become much wider and deeper. Uh, German bonds markets, uh, French Trésor market, are the most actively traded markets in euros uh, at the moment, but, but their sizes are small. Uh, and liquidity are thin in comparison with the U.S. Treasury market and JGB's market. Uh, I think governments within the EU could begin um, uh, to appeal the market by, you know, uh, issuing uh, common euro bond, of course. Um, they don't have to create a big, uh, you know, uh, big project of, uh, you know, consolidation of all individual countries or budget, whatever. I think uh, they could uh, begin by, um, say, um, issuing, uh, s you know, uh, euro, euro denominated bond uh, collectively, uh, covering a small part of Euro EU common budgets. Uh, like, uh, you know, common defense or refugees assistance or uh, space program, whatever, you know, um, before encompassing a wide array of their budgets. Okay. I have actually argued this point for a long, long time uh, with my uh, colleagues in the European uh, central banking uh, circles, but uh, to our regret, Little progress has been made. I'm sorry. Um, what about the SDR and others? Uh, suffice it to quote Charles Kindleberger, who I remember referred to the SDR as the artificial language Esperanto in finance. And, uh, and uh, okay. Uh, gold, he compared with Latin. Okay, yeah. and the U.S. dollar over the English. Okay, <laughs> so I thought uh, that that analogy was pithy, and I continue to do so after three decades. I'm uh, I, I'm afraid I'm uh, you know uh, you know spent uh, most of the allotted time. But 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 last 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 word for maybe thirty seconds. I like to discuss what uh, Jeff Frieden uh, discussed a few minutes ago. It's not Mr. Trump. 
Uh, several years ago, the US government under President Obama tried to use its clout over a global uh, financial system as economic sanction against Russia and, uh, and Iran. It was reported then that the uh, US might even try to limit Russian banks' uh, access to SWIFT, the global message transfer system. Uh, even before Mr. Trump became POTUS, the Chinese began to worry about, uh, about the possibility of its application to China and tried to uh, modern, modernize renminbi payment and settlement systems and widening the scope for international use of the renminbi. In recent years, Chinese concern, concerns have become greater. For example, Yu Yongding, my friend and former member of the PBOC uh, Monetary Committee, wrote an article on a Japanese magazine in July this year, saying that the US might deprive Chinese banks of their access to SWIFT or CHIPS in New York. So uh, he said uh, China should internationalize the renminbi. Okay. So let me stop here. Okay.